Hey everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. Uh, today I just want to show you a little bit about the child of constraint, and then in a future video, I'm going to use it in a shot. So I have a parent object and a child object. One thing to notice is my parent object is at location 000. When I click on the child object and add object constraint child of, I'm going to make the target the parent. Nothing changes, nothing moves. That's because the parent object is at 000 and everything else is zeroed out, including the rotation and the scale. Now, if I move the parent object, it carries around this object as if it was a child of a normal parent relation. And you can also disable certain things. So I can come here and disable rotation if I want to, and just have a location-based constraint. This is great, but I see a lot of people having issues with this where this is off center. So right now it has a location on it. And when I click on the mug again, add the child of constraint, and add the target as the parent, it shifts up to here. That's because it's gone from its original location and it's taking the parent location into account for its new location. As if it was always a child of this parent when it was at location zero. Now you can click on this and do set inverse. What set inverse will do is it'll put the child back at its original location before it was added to the parent object. And you can click clear inverse to undo this. That's all these two buttons do. They store a location to when the constraint was added, and they store the location to when the parent was added. Okay, one last example. Say I have this uh, parent object moving from here to here. And at frame 10, I want it to pick up the mug, move along with it, and then at frame 20, I want it to release the mug. Let's just do this really quickly. So I'll go to frame 10. I'm going to click on the child object, and I'm going to go to add object constraint, child of. I'm going to make the target the parent. The first thing I'm going to do is click set inverse. I want to keep this child object at its original location. So what I'm going to do is at frame 10, I'm going to key the influence. Then I'm going to go back to frame 9 and key it down to 0. To key it, I'm just hovering over the word influence and hitting I on my keyboard. Now, as the parent moves along, it picks up the child at frame 10. Now to drop this at frame 20, there's always an issue here. If I just turn down this dial, it's going to move back to its original location. We have to do a couple of things. I have to key the influence, and I have to key the location, and probably the rotation and the scale as well, of the child object. Then I go to frame 21, and I'm going to have an issue. If I turn this down, it's going to go back to its original location. What I want to do is something different. I want to go to Object, Apply, Visual Transform. What Visual Transform does is it applies the object's location in space with all constraints, parents, and drivers, and inputs it into the location data. So when I click on this, it's updated the data here. Now I can key it. But notice that the child object has moved. That's because it's getting the Visual Transform update and the child of update. I need to turn the child of constraint down to zero, and I need to key it again. Now, at frame zero, the monkey's moving. At frame 10, it picks up the mug, and at frame 20, it drops the mug. We'll look into this in more detail in a more extensive shot. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions or how you use child of constraint in the comments below. Uh, big thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and supporting this channel. Uh, it's because of you guys that I can keep making these videos. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.